Well, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac came out with a policy clarification. There's, there's a couple things that, that are very important to understand in how this may impact you in real estate, in the whole real estate industry, really, as a real estate agent or a loan officer. And again, this is just this morning that they released this. So uh, take a look at the links down below. But you need to understand a couple things. First off, there are seller concessions. Seller concessions are going to go toward items like closing costs, uh, you know, you know, title fees, uh, appraisals, stuff like that. Legitimate closing costs. And every loan type is going to have a different amount that you're allowed. So here's where the real problem kind of came in with this is can we, can we count uh, you know, a buyer's a real estate agent fee into seller concessions. If we do add that to seller concessions, then does that limit being able to pay for actual closing costs or other items? So most of the time, Fannie Mae is usually between two to nine percent is kind of the norm. Uh, well, not kind of the norm; it's exactly what it is. Two to nine percent um, when it comes to closing costs, seller concessions. But they have a secondary item that generally is a no-no, right? <laughs> Unless it's under certain circumstances. And it's called an IPC. That stands for Interested Party Contribution. So Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac came out this morning and said, seller, or, I'm sorry, buyer agent fees, as long as they are customary for the area, then they're going to allow it. It's interesting that they said customary for the area. You think about a couple other things that are customary to the area. First off, think of, uh, think of, uh, a refrigerator, a washer and dryer. Is it customary for the area? Because that's technically personal property, but if it's customary for the area, then we're going to count it and allow it to be on part of that contract. So kind of the same thing here. If it's customary for the area, they're going to allow interested party contributions, which are going to be contributions from the seller to pay for the buyer's agency, or I'm sorry, for the buyer's agent. So that being said, is how is it going to exactly work? It's probably, you know, it's going to still have some details to work out. But the good news is, is those IPCs will not be counted against normal seller concession limitations. So you're going to be able to do business kind of the same that you've been doing business. Now, this is a clarification from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And FHA did come out with a clarification as well. That leaves us with one... <laughs> One agency that is still out there that has not said anything about it and is, has so far been silent on the fact that they do not allow any agent fees. And that's going to be VA. But here's why that's interesting. The reason that they don't allow it, if you read the, the, the VA handbook, the reason they don't allow it is because they feel that it's customary for the seller to pay that fee. So now, with the change in verbiage or the change in how businesses has to be done, are they going to change their verbiage within their handbook to no longer say it's customary for the seller to pay it? Instead, it's the buyer's fee. But could it be customary for the seller to pay that buyer's fee? Just a switch, quick change in, in verbiage could, could fix that for VA. So anyway, take a look below. I'm going to give you a link. You're going to see uh, seller concession limitations. You're going to see Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac's policy clarifications from this morning. I'm also going to send over uh, some guidelines so you can kind of, you can kind of um, look to see how that works. So I know it's a little bit of reading, but a lot of really good information.